single point. Um, if we <coughs> if for example you were going to use ten percent of your excavated peat to fit and you're going to fill in borrow pits on the side. So you would um, set your tide completion of back turnover to one year for example. And the model would still account for twenty four years emissions from that ten percent Still, the model would still be calculating the loss of carbon through carbon fixing potential from that peak until the restoration period. No, it wouldn't. Still it would account for um, if if you if you say that you're going to take the peak that you've extracted yeah. for whatever purpose, put it in the foundations, whatever, and put that into borrow pits, yeah. and you state. That the time required for the hydrology and habitat of the borrow pit to return to its previous state on restoration yeah. is 10 years, then you would have losses up to 10 years, and then after 10 years, the losses in that area would stop. Yeah, so you would get a benefit in that part of the calculation, but on the, the calculation that you use for the restoration, there's no way to take that 10% mm -hmm. of the original volume. Yeah, that's already come off. So, so basically, that you've got your losses that are occurring. Yeah. That are, so if you no, want to say I, something. I think that we have got a, uh, not in here, but uh, in the specific spreadsheet, we have got 100% loss, which is a gain. That, uh, if uh, we know that 10% of the peak is uh, used for restoration, yeah. then there you can put 90% of the carbon is lost from the removal. If I take the heat off for a road, say, and the average heat depth is one metre, and I put it all in a bottom pit at three yeah. or four metres, the surface area is reduced because mm -hmm. the carbon fixing potential has to be less, because yeah. there's less surface area, yeah. so there's less mass. Okay. But, but that's accounting for. That's fairly, the, the carbon fixing potential is fairly minimal, yeah.
that means that that biomass disappears. You know, you don't see it in 25 years' time, and, and you don't get the data to say whether that, that's the problem. Not necessarily in 25 years' time, it could be in 100 years' time. Yeah. Is this not just calculating it over the lifetime of the wind farm? Which no, no. Farm do you have? it's calculating how much carbon would be lost if you just left it draining or, you know, didn't restore it in any way whatsoever. So if you had your, yeah. your wind farm, you dug your drains, you left it. I think, um, James, going back to James' question, I might not completely understand that, and, uh, and my understanding, having talked to her a bit about it, that, that what she was trying to get at was, is the peat that is put in borrow pits, can that really be considered to be lost? Can it be considered to be lost? Or yeah, or the carbon within it lost, because because it's there, it, like, to what extent is it known that it degrades and loses carbon? No. If, you, if you state that you Mm. and you state that you've restored it, mm. then we believe you that you think you, that you can restore it. So at, at that point we say, okay, after that time you've given us, we won't take any more of the carbon out of it. But that's up to you whether you're telling me the truth, that you can actually restore it. If, if you just think you can restore it and you actually can't, then you're giving us the wrong information. So we, we have no, made no presumption that your restoration techniques are effective. And um, some ecologists, <laughs> Olivia Bragg is an example, gets very cross about that and says, there's no way you can restore peats. Once you've dug them up, that's it, they're gonna go. They've been, they've been disturbed and the whole system, this is a living, breathing system and it's been, it's been wrecked by digging it up. That may be the case. Well, 